Cool. Um, so, well, I, I mean, first of all, Tracy, if you wouldn't mind starting by introducing yourself. And before you do, I just want to say thank you um, f because this we wouldn't even be having this conversation uh, without you. Uh, I don't know what it is you said at the table that we were at, uh, but it was like, hmm, maybe we should just do this. So I'm pretty you. sure it was actually Clark because he introduced the two of us. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy. Uh, I work uh, in strategic initiatives at Syracuse University. Um, and um, I am, um, I think you're all like in the northern part of the country too. So we're all experiencing the same like blast of cold weather. Well, maybe except Clark. Clark might be a little bit warmer. But... Right, right. I think we all have some snow in our near futures though. Um, yes, you I definitely, wanna, you yeah, yeah, I definitely have the snow outside the window right now. Um, so my name is Anna Murphy and I am a wife and a mom of a one-year-old and a spiritual formation pastor in Southern Michigan. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, let me get some. Let me get some tunes going. And while I do, um, just say whatever you want. How was everyone's, did you all get a little mini break last week? And if so, how was it? It was, it was used well with a lot <laughs> of reading and writing i don't know dave and i are in school i don't know who else is in school but <laughs> yeah so a lot of reading and writing what about you guys mine is very relaxing i am not in school uh and i think i still have ptsd from defending my dissertation march 30th of 2020 so i've been putting off any other like academic endeavors good for you i had a very nice break and uh now i'm fixated on dan's microphone here i don't know what, what is it <laughs> It's uh, it's a terribly wonderful splurge. <laughs> so it's not just a prop; it's real. No, it's it real. Oh, yeah. It's real. Uh, it's the type of thing that makes all of my other possessions uh, seem inadequate. <laughs> oh well, oh my word! I mean, there's a few of us maybe on here who are a little nerdy in this world, and just have to, like me i have to know what kind of mic is that because i've never seen one like that well none of us have yet uh name likeness or uh mention uh deals for this uh conversation we're having so probably we shouldn't name them uh until uh they partner with us in the ah, that's a good material point. <laughs> continuum that's a good point. Uh, i like that uh, no, nah, that's stupid. It's made by a company <laughs> called Teenage Engineering, and uh, it's a series of exceedingly expensive, uh, 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 the level of care huh. exceeds what most would tolerate or pay for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why it, when I look around at all of the other things that I use, to accomplish the stuff that I want to do, these things show up so, uh, they put the other stuff to shame. It's, uh, it's pretty terrible how they do that. <laughs> I believe all the electronic components are fed only the best of purest, best strain of oxygen. Mm -hmm. It's like when Apple rearranged the molecules in gold because they didn't line up good enough. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a... Uh, they sponsor us, they'll send us all a mic for this podcast. You know, um, they are worth supporting. And a lot of us... Uh, seems like one of the reasons why people will show up in one of these little boxes with uh, Dave has to do with spirituality or uh, mm -hmm. 
ways of being in the world and uh dang it these kinds of things help me relate to my environment and myself and the kinds of work i want to do so much better than there are many similar items uh mm -hmm. that are occurrent in the totality of equipment but uh mm -hmm. this guy rocks mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my commercial well i mean it's not even a commercial really because it relates so much to the our theme today of creativity um so what really essentially um what is the relationship between what it means to be human in the world and that of spirituality or creativity. I'm curious if the rest of you have uh, part of why I like this thing so much is uh, there are skills that I have that I want to apply and there's a whole series of practices that those plug into and there you go there's the music and so with the creativity that i want to be engaged in this thing is already doing it in ways where it's sort of pulling me into it uh well it's situating me in a more opportune, it attunes me to the kinds of creativity I want to uh, have. And so I'm curious what the rest of you, when uh, you think about whatever creativity means, do you have an object, a, a thing that you can relate through it to creation or creativity better or worse through, I'm curious. The simple thing, but like really good pens, especially like a new pen that is yeah. a quality pen will pull me into using that pen for creative things. Same Z, love that. Yeah. I think I might be embarrassed to say that I'm going through the different things in my life where I'm creative. And if it's not a top notch product, <laughs> well, let me just say there's a correlation between I want to have the best paper to write on. I want to have I'm a mountain biker. I do own one of the, it is the best, the top of the line. And that bike is so fun to ride. It's just like a razor blade in the woods. It's so inspiring. Um, and it's nice to, when I walk in my garage and I pull it off the rack, it's the best that anyone can have. It's so nice to have something that's the best of what human engineering could come up with. and my drum set is the same way i don't want to play anybody else's drum set <laughs> i want to play mine because i was very specific about the the heads and the sticks and the symbols and the sizes and the location of everything so alas i may not be as creative <laughs> with the, the things i once was let's put it that way Mine is, I love old cameras. I love the beauty of them. I love the development. Of, so I have cameras dating back. I have a 1906 Brownie camera, like one of the first original cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and actually my, one of my first degrees actually in photography and being in the dark room. And it's so therapeutic being in a dark space with other people. Um, in fact, one of my colleagues when we were in school together we used to talk about how we used it as a therapy session right because you, you could talk and not see people so it was like really like the i think we all became a little less inhibited in our conversations and so we kind of like became fast friends very quickly mm -hmm. but creating in the dark room was always like my it's my space i love it and i'm so sad that it's gone so much more digital now
I was going to say I'm I'm a little bit on the other end of the spectrum in terms of like I feel like as opposed to or not opposed to but my sort of take is typically like whatever I have at hand um or whatever is most convenient in the moment and whatever so for example I have the same guitar I bought when I was 11 years old with money I saved for my paper out which is a Fender Bullet you know a relatively inexpensive guitar um I have the same bass guitar I bought when I was 19, you know, a, what a $400 Rickenbacker and that just, and I've never bought anything else. So like typically I'll get whatever I can afford and what's available to me in the moment. And then unless it's completely broken and absolutely unworkable, um, that will be with me for life. Basically I have a saxophone, a guitar and a bass guitar that I've had since I was five, 10, 11, 12. Um, <clears throat> and similarly, um, I think, uh, yeah, like that's, you know, the bike I ride, I got it used off our neighborhood list serve, you know, a $500 bike that I ride to work. When I go to work, it used to be every five days a week. Um, but, uh, but I've, I've known a lot of people in life who have that other take of being able to like get the Ducati, get the, you know, the top of the line, this and that. And, and I absolutely, uh, I, I can super appreciate that, but it's never been where I've been, uh, mostly for budgetary reasons or just a choice, I guess, maybe. Well, but what I'm noticing Clark is that you, the, the way of being in the world, Clarking is made more possible through the choices you made about what types of things those are. And when we can know something about your way of wanting to show up in the world, it's about endurance and not having to redo stuff. There's so much about a way of life that you can get at through those things. And in that way, it's no different than the ultra fetishizing of the tippity top end of the uh, uh, gadget scale. It's all about what kind of a way of being do we want to have? And these things help us do it uh, in how we relate to and through them. Um, but Anna may have a pattern challenger or uh, a new series when it comes to tools and equipment and how we do creativity. Well, I'll just throw out there too, as a, on a side uh, strand, uh, aside from the tools and equipment in terms of process, um, something that I came across fairly recently that I probably, if any of you have talked to me uh, at, at all in the last six months, I, I've talked your ear off about, I'm sure Dave had got an earload of this in DC, um, this book by Rick Rubin, uh, about the creative act yep. that just came yep. out this past year that I just loved. And it's it's very similar to the process I've been using for making music with the idea being like, just, just go off the top of the mind, like clear your mind, yep. just let things flow through you, kind of lay it down, record it, make it the best you can and get it out there yep. and then make something else and keep doing that and don't worry about it. And don't worry about like what other people think make it for yourself make it something you like um and that's uh that's been super influential for me in terms of like like i've been making music in the past couple of years and stuff and i'd highly recommend that book for anyone who hasn't read it yet awesome we're gonna get uh raining endorsements on this podcast for that book too so thank you and man i'm i'm, I'm kind of going back and forth in my mind about this because I don't can you see the guitar behind me yeah you can see that that's like a Taylor guitar and I've I love guitar since I was 14 and my buddy started showing me some Bush songs in the 90s mm -hmm. uh, show, showed me some power chords I've just been uh, that's always been kind of my creative outlet m mostly is, is playing guitar and I have this buddy in Jackson Michigan who's a mechanical engineer and in his free time in his basements he creates guitars 
and he built me this over the course of a year like a custom made acoustic guitar and I love it and he's like so such a perfectionist as it relates to the details of everything he does and it's re really an amazing way to be in the world but he's um but when I first got that guitar sure it like inspired me and I, I played some songs on it but I had this crappy piece of shit guitar when I was 14 acoustic guitar um and I still have it to this day it's got big huge holes in it um it's a honer a honer guitar H O. that was my first guitar and it's like a that's a brand of like harmonicas but they made a guitars for like super cheap or whatever and um I wrote so many songs in high school on that thing. Why is it that a piece of crap? Uh, it, I mean, I'm just trying to think of, it, is it essential? I'm kind of going back a little bit to what you, you were saying, Clark, I think is like, is it essential in order to be creative, to be using objects, tools that were given a great deal of um, details uh, and, and focus and, and craft craftsmanship uh, is is that necessary for the continuation of creativity or is it helpful for you Dan to have that amazing mic that I'm super jealous of now <sighs> Well, I drew a little diagram while you were talking about uh, care. Hmm. If it's the, uh, if if we were to say exquisite care, that that's the threshold. Mm -hmm. Then, if there is uh, the creativity that I want to be involved in, and that is something where I want that to be exquisite care town as much as possible, and if my relationship with that is mediated by a thing then my gosh yeah then the the thing being realized through the ethic of exquisite care um heightens the probability of uh of it not artifacting so uh one of the architects that i love is uh lewis khan and you can see the artifacts of the plywood that was used in the formwork to, uh, or Marcel Breuer, holy crap, if you're ever in Collegeville, Minnesota, mm -hmm. or Muskegon, Michigan, there are two Marcel Breuer churches made out of concrete that have this formwork thing going where there's millions of individual boards whose imprint is in that mm -hmm. concrete and that that is the resistance of the so back to things and the celebration of things as ways that we can relate more and better to the world and to be in the world the way that we want to show up like it shows up yeah if there's no resistance in the middle there that might be awesome but at the same time there's plenty of like your guitar dave uh the resistance there um or uh Clark, the resistance through time of some of the objects that you abide through. Um, and James, uh, no resistance mm -hmm. um, yeah. at the high end. That's one thing that we can say about those right. things. I don't know if the, if the, yeah. if it's the ethic of exquisite care so much as a uh, total domination of market or what have you, but you might end up in the same place of it doesn't, I don't feel it when I reach through it to do mm -hmm. creation. So, yeah, again, I think my, I'm always going to try to make us be talking about the same thing and not different <laughs> things. Well, I think reflecting on this, my experience is that I want to get into the flow unencumbered, unhindered. And if I, when I approach my drum set, there's little gaskets between the lugs and the shell, which reduce the vibration between the metal sitting on the maple. Now, nobody can hear the difference. <laughs> But to me, in a recording situation, I don't want to deal with any problems. When I do record, I have a studio at home. I just want pure tone. And when I'm riding my bicycle, I don't want to deal with shifting or braking. I just want the pure, I just want to focus on what's happening. And I kind of, even though I do appreciate this exquisite craftsmanship of my instruments, I just want to forget about them while I'm using them.
which makes me curious. I'm going to pitch it over to like the camera, Tracy. Like, I got to know what is it about approaching a hundred and some year old camera? <laughs> so as you all are talking, and I think this is going to answer your question, James, too. I'm thinking like we're talking about these objects, but we're talking about them with so much emotion. So maybe it's not necessarily the things, but it's the like feelings that they how they present the feelings inside us. Like when you see a beautiful building, like, or when you ride a smooth bike or play. Um, and for me, like I look at my cameras and I'm like, whose hands have been on these? I'm like, what well, artists have used these to create like these masterpieces? I'm, I do not pretend to be an artist by any means whatsoever. Hence the reason I'm in higher ed now, I'm not a photographer anymore. But, um, but I can appreciate beauty and other people's beauty. So I'm just, I keep thinking, like, I don't know if it's necessarily things or the feelings we get through those things. But yes, I still, I do love my old cameras. I think it's both and, right? Like, that's a really good point. And it's what is that emotion pulling you to do in which direction or the other so if there's something you're using a thing that is creating a boundary between you and what you want to create it's not going to produce the emotions in you that pull you into a creative process and a creative mindset but dave like in your example of this guitar that you had i'd imagine that when you look at that guitar now you don't just see the guitar you see like all of the songs that you wrote on that guitar and all of the emotions that you felt when you wrote them um, and so that guitar might pull you into that process even more so than a new guitar, um, even if you, you want to perform those songs on a new guitar later. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this is fascinating. I think I could go on all day with you guys on this. Um, but I do, I am looking at the time too and realizing that. I'm supposed to be keeping us under 10 minutes. So how about we close it out with this? Anna, if you wouldn't mind actually just starting us off with answering the question, what is creativity in relationship to your being in the world? Um. I think creativity is a process of celebrating beauty and contributing beauty to the world. I think it can be something that's spontaneous and also something that is a, a discipline that creates more room for creativity. And as someone who believes in a creator God, I think that um, we're created to create and participate in that as well. Creativity for me is uh, both a means of producing something, but also a way of being in process and I'm as in love with the product that comes out the other end of creativity as I am in the process. I don't care about the product, but I also care about the product. <laughs> I also care what happens as a result of my efforts in the process, but I'm just in love with the process. I don't care what happens at the other end of it. So I live in that, ten it's not really tension, but I suppose I live in that in between those two poles as a creative individual and, and like yourself, Anna, I, my identity is as creator because I believe I was made in the image of a creator. So it's my nature to create, to not be engaged in the process and be inhuman to me. I told my therapist that there's a big difference between creativity and productivity and that for me, creativity is the single most important measure for me as it relates to my health.
creativity of thought, of speech, of movement, play, uh, in the moment, just flowing. really trying to find an answer to this question and I just keep coming back to this thought like I am um, I'm a very relationship oriented person I really like finding the uniqueness in people but also like similarities and like the way people are connected and the way we connect with our surroundings and I think I don't know I think there is um creativity in the way we interact with others and it's really cool to observe those interactions um, between other people as well and the environment. The way that I use it, uh, and your question specifically, Dave, about uh, being in the world, uh, mostly, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to put the boundary around it, but I've come to understand it as one of the essential offsets to uh, what anxiety does. And uh, in particular, the oops <laughs> the type of anxiety about uh meaninglessness and uh the, the when i'm in a bad way uh when i don't listen to anxiety i get uh super hung up on and sad about meaninglessness and uh i cling i have unrealistic certainty about concepts I have discovered uh, as a not good way to listen to what anxiety is saying. Uh, what it's saying is get into creativity um, and uh, then I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Namaste. See you next time. Yeah. See you. Take care. Bye.